Today on The Hookup, I'm gonna show you how to take your Tuya based switches, do more, get spied on less, and generally unlock the power of your smart home by flashing custom firmware. No soldering required. The comment section of my last video was a war zone, and I'm not even mad about it. You guys brought up a lot of great points, and I tried to respond to each one of them. But I'm still standing by my initial recommendation here. If you're just starting out with a smart home, Tuya products are very affordable, and the Tuya app has some great automation and scene creation options. The number one issue with Tuya, and all IoT devices for that matter, is data security. But it's not a new issue. Your data is being collected and used by every company that has a connected device in your house. And that includes apps on your phone, your smart TV, your game consoles, media players, cable boxes, voice assistants, and even your router. Your Tuya devices with factory firmware do collect your data. Specifically, the data that they send out to their cloud includes the email address and phone number that you use to register with Tuya, how often you turn your lights on and off, and also your latitude and longitude which I assume is used for time zone calculations, but it's the thing that I'm the least comfortable with. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to take the first step of many towards data privacy and local control. Before we get into the nitty gritty of changing firmware and adjusting settings, let me give you a small sample of what's possible with the Tasmoda firmware and a home automation hub like Home Assistant. This is my exercise room, studio room, and guest room. This multi-purpose room gets a lot of uses and it transforms several times a week to accommodate different tasks. My wife does her morning run on the treadmill whenever it rains. I write my video scripts and respond to YouTube comments while riding my exercise desk bike each night. My daughter has sleepovers in this room with her cousins and friends. And I record my videos in this room using a green screen backdrop. The room has two smart switches and a smart dimmer to control the lighting. And there's also a Fire TV Cube, a Samsung TV, and on top of the bookcase and Murphy beds, there are some DIY individually addressable RGB LEDs that are running my Holiday Lights 2.0 sketch. My goal in this room was to create a cohesive system that integrates the different light sources intuitively and allows different scenes to be easily selected to modify the lighting in the room based on its different uses. Using custom firmware and Home Assistant allows a single dimmer to toggle and dim both the light that it's physically attached to as well as my DIY LED lighting despite the fact that they're not physically connected or made by the same brand. In order to still be able to control the lights individually, I've also added a long press option on the same switch that will toggle the state of the LED lights without affecting the fan light. The next switch operates the fan just as you would expect, but holding down the switch for two seconds will activate a scene that gets the room ready for me to do my um, work exercise. This means turning the lights to 50% brightness and turning the TV on so I can use it as a monitor. The last switch is for the outlet. And like the last two, the main function works just as you would expect. It turns the outlet on and off. But the hold action activates a night light for this room for my daughter's sleepovers, which turns out all the lights except for the bookcase LEDs and it sets those to 5% brightness with the rainbow pattern. Whenever I plan one of my smart home integrations, I always ask myself two questions. First, did I overcomplicate things? Will I need to leave an instruction manual for someone to operate the lights in this room? In this specific case, each switch acts exactly the way you would expect it to when using it normally. The dimmer makes the lights dim, the fan switch turns on the fan, and the outlet switch turns on the outlet. Even though there's added functionality, the basic use of these switches is unaltered, and no one's gonna mess anything up just by using the switches as they're intended. Second, did it cost more money than it was worth? The switches that I'm using in here are made by Martin Jerry and sold on Amazon US. I picked up a two pack of switches for $24 on a lightning deal and I got the Martin Jerry dimmer for around $24. So all in all, it cost me less than $50, which is certainly worth it in my opinion. The best part is that accomplishing all of this isn't actually that difficult, thanks to some very, very smart and talented people. In order to change the Tuya firmware, we're gonna stand on the shoulders of giants and use a fantastic Linux script called Tuya Convert. If you want to feel both informed and inadequate at the same time, I recommend watching this hour-long presentation from the guy who built Tuya Convert. He details the various methods that he used to crack the Tuya firmware and the concerns that he has about Tuya and IoT devices in general. The link for that talk is down in the description. In order to use Tuya Convert, you'll need a computer that has both a wired and a wireless internet connection. You can do this with a virtual machine on a laptop or a desktop, 
but the easiest solution is to use a Raspberry Pi. If you don't already have one, it's worth getting one for fun little projects around the house. It's also the most common hardware for installing Home Assistant, which is a free, open source home automation hub that I totally recommend. I'm not going to do a full walkthrough of the Tuya Convert process in this video, because I have a feeling that, that information may become quickly out of date if Tuya updates their firmware. But the basic steps involve setting up your Raspberry Pi with a fresh copy of Raspbian, using the Linux graphical interface or an SSH client like PuTTY to get access to your terminal, and then copy and pasting a bunch of various commands into that window to flash your device. If you'd like a full walkthrough of every step, I've included a link to DigiBlur DIY's video down in the description, and I also have a link to a full written walkthrough on my website. Once you've completed your over-the-air flash of Tasmoda, your device will broadcast an SSID that you can connect to in order to configure your settings. Connect to that SSID and navigate to 192.168.4.1 to enter your SSID and password. Be extra careful when you input your SSID and password because you won't get another chance if you do it wrong. Once your device has your wireless information, you should check your router or use an app like Fing to determine its IP address. Then you just navigate to that IP address and you can start setting up your new locally controlled device. Now, perhaps the most difficult part of getting a Tuya device working with its new custom firmware is setting up the module with the correct pin, chip, and relay settings in the configure module page. There's a wiki page of compatible devices that will give you some clue as to which pins should have which chips on them, but in order to make the process a little bit easier, I've created a Google form for users to submit their working configurations, and then I'm gonna use that data to create a curated list of products and their configurations to help users not only select which product will work best for their application, but also to help get them easily set up. I'll also be cross-posting that database to the Tuya Convert GitHub page. The link for that Google form is down in the description. If you get your new module working, please consider submitting the settings to that database. Tasmoda has a ton of functionality out of the box. You can control your lights via MQTT, you can set up local Amazon Echo voice controls, and you can even set up timers as you see fit. There's also an advanced rules engine that I'm currently in the process of making a graphical user interface for. More on that in a future video. For my switches, I activated the ability to both single press and long press by using switch mode 5 and then adding a rule to publish different MQTT commands for single press and long press. To synchronize the brightness of my dimmer with both the room lights and my LED lights, I'm using node red to read the MQTT state of the dimmer, and then I use a call services node to set the brightness percent of my DIY LEDs, and this keeps them perfectly in sync. The best part is, none of these things require a connection to the internet or a cloud service that could be collecting your data. To get your devices to operate locally, you will need an MQTT server, which is easily done using a home automation hub like Home Assistant. Home Assistant offers fairly straightforward integration of thousands of different home automation products. And depending on the device, it often allows you to cut the cloud out entirely. If you're not quite ready to take the plunge into Home Assistant, Tasmoda also offers built-in support for Amazon Echo devices. This means that even without Home Assistant and an MQTT server, you can still use the Alexa app for your home automation hub. Amazon certainly collects data about you but they won't have the ability to publish their own firmware updates or make any modifications to your devices without your knowledge. And let's be honest, they aren't getting any more information that they didn't have from you just having the Echo device in your house in the first place. Also, I hold the often unpopular opinion that if my data is gonna be collected, I'd rather it be in the hands of Google or Amazon because they have these massive teams of talented developers that are ensuring that my data is properly protected. Of course, mistakes can happen, but they happen less with the big guys than in small tech companies that have limited budgets for equipment and talent. If all of this sounds interesting but overwhelming, that's okay. My best advice to you is to just get started. Start small, but try something out. There is a whole network of amazing YouTubers and bloggers producing awesome tutorials for people of all skill levels. Also down in the description, I've included a list of some of my favorite home automation YouTubers. If you also produce smart home content and you'd like to be included in that list, please post a comment below and I'll add you. Finally, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.